Hello everyone, I'm Alex, and I'm one of the science kids. In the mid-17th century, Isaac Newton was making strides in the field of physics and motion. However, he reached an impasse. He realized that the math that he was using could not represent concepts of change and motion in the field of physics. So he locked himself away and isolated himself for an entire month and came up with the field of calculus. And calculus, to this day, is extremely crucial in physics and motion. Calculus is incredibly important in applying math to the real life. And in this video, we're going to be talking about one of the applications of calculus to physics in projectile motion. Projectile motion can be seen from shooting a basketball to firing a cannon or sending a rocket to Mars. Projectile motion is extremely important in our daily lives. So, what does calculus have to do with it? But before we start talking about projectile motion, let's start talking about change in math itself. Let's say we have a graph that looks something like this. As you can see, the graph is increasing over this interval. It's decreasing over this interval. It's increasing over this interval. Decreasing over this interval. And from here on all the way to infinity, it's increasing. That makes sense, but how do we represent this mathematically? But before we get into projectile motion itself, I'd like to introduce the concept of the derivative, which basically explains how to represent change mathematically. Let's say we have the graph of the function f of x is equal to x cubed. That graph looks something like this. Now how do we represent change throughout the whole graph mathematically? Well, there's a simple way to do it. Let's say we take lines that touch every single point on this graph, something like this. All right, these are just a few of the infinite number of points on these graphs. So what do these lines do? Well, each of these lines tells us how fast and in what direction the graph is changing at that very point. So, using the slope of each of these lines, we can create a new graph that shows us how this graph is trending. So, the new graph that is based entirely upon the slope of these tangent lines should look something like this. This is the graph of 3x squared. So, what does this new graph mean? Well, if you look at the very end of this graph, where it's going all the way down, the, the tangent lines look something like this, almost completely straight which means that this graph should go towards infinity, which it is. On the other side, the tangent lines are also getting steeper and steeper, so the new graph should go towards infinity, which it is. As it, as it goes towards the middle, we can see that the tangent lines are becoming closer and closer to zero, and as you can see, the second graph becomes closer and closer to zero. This is the concept of a derivative. A derivative shows that this fun how this function is changing. So we can say that the derivative of f of x is equal to 3x squared. Now, if we wanted to take a derivative of a function quickly, uh, it's pretty inefficient to draw every single tangent line on every single point of a graph. So we have a shortcut. It's called the power rule. Now let's just say we have some random term. It looks like this. It has the coefficient a times x to the n power. So how do we take the derivative of this function? Oh, and for future reference, the denotion of a derivative of a function usually looks like this. It's the same as the original function, but with a little apostrophe like that. We call that f prime of x. So the power rule tells us that our function should equal... So the power rule tells us that the derivative of this function should equal a times n times x to the n minus 1. So what does this mean? Well, let's say we have the function 5 times x to the 7th. 5 is our a, and 7 is our n. So, what do we do with this? The derivative of 5x to the 7th should look something like this. We know that our a is 5, and our n is 7. So, a times n should equal 35. And our, our exponent is n minus 1. Our original n was 7, so... The derivative of our function should be 35 times x to the 6. The power rule works for any... The power rule gives us a shortcut to taking the derivative of this function. So instead of drawing every single line of every single point on this graph and creating a new graph that shows the trends of that graph, we just use the power rule. So now that we get the concept of the derivative, what does this have to do anything with physics? Well, in physics, distance is usually denoted by this term, s. This means displacement. Velocity is usually denoted by this term, v, which means velocity. And acceleration is usually denoted by this term, 
A. This formula tells us that the total displacement is equal to the initial displacement plus the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. These little zeros over here just means it's how it started off. Now think about this. When something is moving, that's telling us how much the position of that object is changing. And when something's accelerating, that's telling us how much this velocity is changing. So you could say that velocity is the derivative of displacement and acceleration is the derivative of velocity. We hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for our next few videos. Don't forget to check out our social media pages and our website in the description. And as always, science is everywhere and in everything. Bye!